Hello Earthlings, it's Neutron again, back with another album review. I'm currently in Tacoma, hence the temporarily new background. This is probably the longest I have waited since an album came out to review it. It's Yankee and the Foreigners by Yankee and the Foreigners. This is the Boston-based transatlantic alt-country, whatever you want to call it, bands first full-length album, and their first release with their new lead guitarist, Molly Pope, who replaced Huxley Rittman off their debut EP, Don't Wake Me Up. Maybe in a few years' time, people will look back and say, Huxley Rittman was in the same band as Connor McCoy, Sam Marks, Tim Lowton, and Zach Rustem? That's like Jay Farrar being in the same band as Jeff Tweedy. Oh, wait. Anyway, um... These guys are one of the best alt-country bands out there, from what little alt-country I know. Drive-By Truckers, Wilco, Yankee and the Foreigners, Lucinda Williams. And I was going to put on my onesie to review this album, because it's a Yankee and the Foreigners album, but then I remembered I don't actually have a onesie. But anyway, let's just get to the music. Okay, Little Elephants, uh, written and sung by Connor McCoy, is the first song I saw them play live. I think they may have actually played this album in its order when I saw them play live. Right off the bat, the one thing that uh, slightly intrigued me about them was that Tim, being both a banjoist and rhythm guitarist, plays banjo on the up-tempo songs like this one, and his banjo goes really well with Molly's guitar. It's definitely the hardest rocking song of the album, of course, Connor is a great singer. Why else would he get all the jokes made about him? Oh, right, he's the bassist. It's also got some nice harmonica from Sam, the keyboardist at the end. And it's definitely one of my favorites, and it's a great opener because it just hits you off the bat with some rock and roll with, a, with the little banjo twist Tim gives it. Speaking of Tim, Sleepy Queen is his first song of the album. It's a real swinger uh, or a shuffle whatever you want to call it. Group vocals abound. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. That's basically the hook of the song. Sam adds some more subtle harp to this song, which again blends with uh, the banjo. And I love the juxtaposition of mature and juvenile images in the lyrics. Like, one moment he's saying, I'll keep away the monsters underneath your bed, and then in the next line, I hope you'll always wake up next to me. That's one of the many things to love about Sleepy Queen. Of course, if you have a banjoist in your band, it wouldn't be right to not do a little bluegrass, and that's where Honolulu comes in. I believe it's a Marx McCoy co-write, sung by Connor, about getting cold feet at your wedding. I'll be lying when I say I do. There's a nice big group vocal at the end where everyone is singing the chorus. I can imagine the audience singing the chorus at future shows with them. It's similar to what Linkin Park did on Iridescent, but with a completely different effect. Track four is Timber. Oh my god, we're only four tracks in and it's Connor's last song of the album. But what a way to go out. It's got some really beautiful vocal harmonies that just blow Sleepy Queen out of the water. I like the play on words because it's full of tree metaphors, but there's a nice play on words in the line about pining souls and aging oak. When Zach's drums come in, it just really expands out at the end. It almost turns into maybe one of Deer Hunter's more ambient moments, like cryptograms or something. Or maybe an Atlas Sound or Lotus Plaza solo song. Ours is Molly's one song of the album. It's a shining demonstration of her really intricate rhythm playing. It's just her and Tim playing the song, and the banjo is very much accompanying the guitar. The guitar is the front and center thing, as well as Molly's voice, but the guitar is very much the lead instrument, which is a nice inversion of the typical country bluegrass hierarchy that the banjo is always the lead instrument because you don't usually strum a banjo. But Tim proved that wrong on Little Elephants because he's strumming all the way through that song. Gentle Giant is one of two songs re-recorded from Don't Wake Me Up and I'm glad they chose this one because uh, it is their greatest song so far. It was just too good to leave off the album. They've re-recorded it with Molly, I believe, and uh, Tim also overdubs some banjo onto this version, including a questioning phrase at the end, which uh, I love. And uh, just like Timber blew Sleepy Queen out of the water, 
Uh, so does Gentle Giant with the two tracks before it. Almost all of this song is sung in harmony, and the melody is just pure folk bliss. Its shape kind of lures you into a trance with the way it repeats, and Sam and Molly's piano and guitar figures echoing and bouncing off the foundation that Tim lays down. And uh, as I've already said at least once or twice already, it's just their greatest song so far. I don't know if they can top it with their next album. If anyone from the band is watching, I challenge you to top Gentle Giant. Stolen Roses is the only song on the album sung entirely by Sam. Uh, it kind of sounds like early Mumford and Sons, not just because it's sung by an English guy. It's another slightly bluegrassy number. I like the way Sam sounds when he sings the chorus, the oh, I'm not doing that bit justice at all. Sam's other song on the album is I Have to Do It the Way He Says It. This is not negotiable. It's another song re-recorded from Don't Wake Me Up with, I believe, Zach singing the part that Huxley sang on it and then Molly taking over his part in the guitar-organ duel in the middle. I take back whatever I said about Little Elephants rocking hard. Not Negotiable is the hardest rocking song of the album. Uh, the, the guitar and organ just attack you right from the get-go. Dun, 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 dun. They can't even wait to get through a full four bars of four. They've got to cut off a couple beats because they're so impatient to just keep going. You've also got a really fun bit of group yelling at the end. Gotta let it out! Gotta let it out! And the last song is called Banjo Song, uh, written, surprise, by Tim. This is the last bluegrass number of the album. I can only describe it as pure bluegrass. And it's also got a trademark Yankee group shout at the end. Banjo! I like how they kept a little bit of studio noise in at the end where Sam has to get the last word in even though it's banjo song so he touches some part of the piano keyboard. So all in all I would say this is definitely a great album and a sign of masterpieces to come. There are a couple songs where I don't agree a hundred percent with the production like Zach's drums on Little Elephants sound a bit polite compared to what I heard him play live and Tim's lead vocal on Sleepy Queen sounds a bit processed, but nothing really gets in the way of the song on any of these tracks. I would say this is their best album ever, but it's their only album. I mean, the only thing they've done besides this is Don't Wake Me Up. And it's their only release with Molly as lead guitarist. So, if this isn't a must-have for any alt-country fan, then I bet one of their future releases is going to be and uh, you can pretend to have known them when. I mean, I actually did. I had a class at college with Connor McCoy. Um, but I want to say how great this album is, but I can't really find anything to compare it against. I will say that there isn't a bad song anywhere on the album, and you should just listen for yourself. So those are my opinions. I'm dying to hear yours. Leave them in the comments. And until next time, this is Neutron Sound signing off. Go forth and banjo!